Hey everyone, this is Elisa and I'm going to show you quickly how to set up your Flipgrid in Canvas. Um, and I'm not going to edit this video, so I'm just going to keep on moving if I make a mistake. Alright, first step is to sign up for an account. Remember, educators sign up, students do not need to sign up. So either hit this blue button or the red button and then register with a Google sign up. You can use Microsoft as well. Uh, right here it says students do not need accounts, so don't worry about that. So for you, sign up with Google, choose your GCC email, and you're ready to go from there. Now, obviously, I already have an account, so I'm going to log in just quickly and show you. Okay, so once you have an account, each of your classes, when you, when you add them to your Canvas course, they will show up here. They are called grids. So grid is a class. And within a class, you will have uh, topics. So in this class there are four topics, right? So you would call them assignments or discussions. All right, so after you have signed up for your account, when you go into your account up at the top next to your name, scroll down to integrations, and in integrations you will see your consumer key and shared secret. Don't be still in my shared secret. <laughs> My shared secret all right so next what you'll want to do is when you're in the class that you want to add Flipgrid to go all the way down to settings click on apps type in Flipgrid when it pops up choose it and then add app all right so that consumer key and shared secret these two, you want to type them into here or copy and paste them into here and then add the app. All right, so once you have that in there, we're going to go into a different class that's already added. Okay, so in this class, I've added Flipgrid already, and so Flipgrid will show up on the menu bar. If you don't want that to show up on the menu bar, you can hide it in settings. Uh, but for now, if you click on that, if students click on that, it'll bring it up. Now, you want them to actually go to the assignment. So let's create an assignment for them to click on to participate. All right, so I'm in assignments and I can add an assignment. I want to call it whatever. I can spell discussion. All right, so I give it a name. I type in some text in here. I scroll down, give it a point value. Why is this messed up? Hang on a second here. There we go. Uh, points. I put it in an assignment group if I want to. I want to display this as points. And then submission type is the key. So I'm going to choose external tool. For submission type and then I want to choose find and then all of these options will pop up and I want to scroll down there in alphabetical order I want to go to the F's and choose Flipgrid so once that's chosen I hit select and now I can have this load in a new tool or I can have it load in the assignment window I like for it to show in the assignment window so I do not check this sign it to everyone give it a due date and then you hit save now what happens is that now pops up in the assignment window and then students will be able to scroll down they'll see the record button and then they can participate in this discussion now if you chose to open in a new window this is what happens the window is a little bit bigger so they'll see this they'll see your instructions <laughs> nice instructions click that button and now it just opens in a new window okay so they can see a lot more I like to keep them in canvas and you see here it kind of takes them outside of canvas and they won't get lost if they stay inside of canvas all right so let me show you what it looks like Okay, so here is a real assignment that I created using this tool. So when students click on it, they see my instructions. 
I think it's a good practice to give them very clear instructions, especially if they're going to use their app. And I'm going to show you what that's going to look like uh, on the app in a second. Uh, then I give them just a little screen. This, is, this image has changed now where they don't actually have the hearts anymore. But you can take a screen capture of what it looks like and tell them click here, click here. And then at the bottom, you'll actually be able to see the students that respond. Okay, so these are the students that respond and how many people have viewed their responses. Then when you want to grade, you can go into Speed Grader. And I have permission to show you the students, a couple of my students' work since they uh, did such a good job. But anyway, so I just learned this from Louise So Thanks, Louise. Um, so what happens is the student has posted three times. Their first post is generally their initial post. So if they have to do something different on their first post, post than you have them do on the uh, subsequent posts, then you'll want to go in order. So here the student makes her first video. And then these next two videos are replies to other students. So I can scroll through. And so you can always tell how many times you tell them to reply because that's all you get. <laughs> so I get one response and then two replies. And so I can then give Catherine a grade. And then if I go to the next student, I can do the same. So this student has replied a lot more, his initial post. And so the difference between Mark's uh, responses and Catherine's is that um, Mark is on a cell phone and Catherine is on her computer. And that's why the video size is different. Okay, so I'm on my cell phone now. And when students are doing their work in Canvas, they'll be able to participate in Flipgrid. All they have to do is find the app. So I'm going to go in as Canvas student. Then I'm going to go into the class that has the Flipgrid assignment. I'm going to go into my modules. And the assignment is in module four. And there is the discussion that I set up with Flipgrid. And so they will see the instructions again on what they need to do. And right there on the bottom where it says launch external tool. Now when I click it, it, it knows I'm the instructor, so it prompts me to log in. But right there for a split second, you see what students see. <laughs> and basically it'll be a big green button that says click this button to participate and then students can add. Okay, so it's pretty easy on the mobile device.